the inlay material that we use is uh, a holly veneer. Um, it comes in, uh, in sheets, veneer sheets. You can get it a 32nd, and sometimes you can get it a 16th. Uh, I, I got this from uh, Domex Hardwoods. Um, it, was a, it was a sheet about maybe about that long and about that wide. Uh, it's about 50 bucks, uh, so it's, it's not cheap. But, it's, but if you want some thicker, thick veneer for your inlays, that's, that's what you have to do. Um, now, let's talk about how we just make a, a, a simple uh, uh, stringing inlay. We're going to put a piece of holly in like that. What do we need for a tool? Well, I made, a, I'm, I made an original, original table I made. I used this. This is a scratch stock. There's a tiny little t tooth stuck there, made out of a piece of card scraper. Tiny little tooth. And it's in this little, just a little block of wood. And you just put it here and just put it down, let's see? And you just drag it. And pretty soon you've got a groove. And that's, that's the way uh, it was originally done. So this is, this is a pretty cheap tool and works pretty fast. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll leave this up here, and when we're, when we're done, you can come up and try it. Uh, I'm, there's, there's a second groove here that I've started, but it isn't done all the way. So that's, the, uh, that's how you uh, can, can make the groove. Later, I'm going to show you how to do it with the router. But I uh, just thought I'd show you the original way as a, as a way of uh, talking about it to get it started. Now, um, once you have the uh, veneer, you've got to get it thicknessed. There's a <clears throat> the thickness for these uh, for these um, string here, uh, 364, or about 47 thousandths, and that is a, 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 looks like to me I find is a, a nice number. I know that Roger Myers likes uh, 30 second of an inch. They're really really fine. And uh, you can, and you get 30 second of an inch veneer, so that'll work. That'll work for you. But I like the little fatter one. A sixteenth of an inch just looks too too th too thick. Uh, doesn't have, uh, just doesn't doesn't look quite right. So now I'll just show you quickly. I'm going to just glue this in here. So what we need to do is just put a little glue in there, and uh, and we can and, and we can just stick in the stick in the piece of holly and let it dry. Let me get my glue. Where's my glue over here? No, no, this is what I need. Sorry about that. So you got a very little groove, very tight little groove to put it in, so it helps to have a, a little glue syringe. Uh, this is just a little plastic syringe, and I can I'm gonna, I keep it in, in, in water so that it doesn't dry out, uh, doesn't dry out the glue. And now uh, I'm just going to put that in here, and I'll just run down a strip of, 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 of glue. Is that just PVA glue? This is white glue. I don't use, uh, I'm not sure what it is chemically, but it's, it's white glue. Okay. The reason I use white glue um, is that there's no glue line with the white glue. There we go. And I just put it back in my water there to keep it dry. And now we just put this in here. It's not like a polyurethane. And there it goes. We just put that aside and let it dry, and we'll deal with it again later. I should say, in thicknessing, uh, this 16, how do you thickness it? Well, uh, what I did uh, with a larger piece, I taped one end of it down to a piece of MDF, and I ran it through my drum sander, very slow, very just lightly, just tight. And I, I have a little gauge here that's got the 364th groove cut in it. And so as I was doing it, I would try it on the piece of wood and say, ah, that's too tight. That happens. That's a little too tight. You don't want it that tight. You, you want it to you want it to be fairly loose so it goes in, because when you put the glue in there. It'll swell, and uh, that, that extra thousandth or two that you take off uh, works out very well. Um, now let's see. 
take a like here. Let's see about, uh, where's that like here? I'll try showing you how to do it now with the, with the router. Um, yeah, we can do it on this side here. I'm just going to clamp this in the, in the vise. By the way, if you're going you to go to work on table legs, having a vise like this is a, is a, is a, is a big plus. Um, we'll just clamp this leg in here. Yeah. Now, The router needs to be, what do I do with that? Uh, let me see. I have my quarter inch, uh, there it is, eighth inch. The general, uh, general uh, sh shape that we do is we put the, um, the stringing an eighth of an inch in from the edge of the leg. And so I need to set, I need to set this router to um, an eighth of an inch. Now you can you try and do that with a, with a, with a ruler. But frankly, having a, uh, having a setup block like this is well worth the price. These things, are, these things are very, very useful. And you get a perfect thing. So all I have to do is put it up against the fence, push it up against the blade, and tighten the screw. Okay. There it is. And so I'm exactly an eighth of an inch in uh, from the fence. So these things aren't cheap, but they're worth the, they're worth the weight in, in gold when you're, when you're starting to do accurate work. And they're very great for setting up the router, or router bit heights and things, all that sort of thing. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you can see this too well, but this is a 364th inch bit. And it's, uh, it's extended down about 330 seconds. Generally I, cut, generally, I cut my strips about an eighth of an inch wide, so that gives me another 30 second uh, being proud. Uh, we're gonna, this one's going to be, I don't have one cut for that size today, but uh, we'll just work it. Now, I'm, I'm just going gonna, gonna to put this on here, and I'm going to run, run along. I'm not going to worry about getting to, to a stop. This has a light on it, too, so I can turn the light on. We have editing. <laughs> So here we are with a groove. I, uh, I wobbled just a little bit. You gotta be real careful when you do this, but I'm, I didn't have a good balance, so I got a little, got a little boo-boo there. But now you see you've got all this, all this uh, sawdust in here. So this, now this little curve tool gets the sawdust out. If you don't have a, the curve tool, how do you get the sawdust out? Well, you make, you make a curve tool. <laughs> So well, that's it. Now that's a, that's a lot faster than the scratch stock, and it's a lot faster than using the, this thing too. But there it is, and uh, and now of course we're ready to we're going to be ready to glue in a a, a piece of uh, well, that's a, that was a little fat. Bruce, do you have a source where you get those router bits from? Oh yes, the router bits. That's right. that's uh, oh. it's in the handout. Yep. Yep. Drill Technologies. In fact, I'll hand one around so you can look at it. Just so you oh. see, I had one here to hand around. Thank you. Yeah, that's a 32nd of an inch bit. What size bit are you using now? Uh, 364s, about 47 thousandths. Yeah, that's cool. 364s. <laughs> so that's, that's, cutting the, that's cutting the groove. There you go. Who's the manufacturer the, uh, the Dremel? The, I'm sorry, the, the, the Dremel is, uh, shut the light off too. The, um, the, this is a Dremel. This is a Veritas, Lee Valley. It's their plunge-based router. It's in the, the part numbers in the, uh, in the handout. But it's just great. You can do it up and down, slide it in and out. Uh, everything you need to do uh, is, 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 is done, done with that. 
Uh, and uh, so I guess that pretty much takes care of the it. basics of cutting a, cutting a groove. Let's see what comes next. What do I have here next? Let's see what my notes say. Okay. Well, let's talk about some, we'll talk about curve stringing now. Uh, if, you, if you look at your handout, you'll see uh, uh, the, there is some curve stringing there. And um, the problem with curve stringing is how do you, you, you're going to obviously use a compass of some sort, but with a compass, where do you put the, how, what's the radius that you need? Now, if you look at the, uh, if we look, can you see this diagram okay? Yep. All right. Here is, here's the piece of curve stringing, okay? This is the length that I want. So I look on my table and I say, well, how long, how long do I want this curve to be? And we decided that uh, for this table, three and a quarter inches is fine. Good length. That's what, that's what that is there and in the pictures. Now, this, this length here, this is the leg stringing, okay, on the edge. So now I've got to move in a certain distance, and how far do I need to go? Well, um, sh so here, I have a center line down here. Oh, I probably I should have probably I should have put the eighth. I put should have milled these. Let's let's do that. So you can see it better. So. By the way, when you're running this thing, uh, it's like any other router. If you run it from left to right this way, then of course the, uh, I'm sorry, if you run it from left, right to left, which is what we really should do, yeah. the bit's going around this way. So you know about the, the force on the bit's going to push it against the fence as you cut. If you, if, uh, if you come this way, it has a tendency to push it away, and that's what, that's what happened to me down on that other one. So we'll, we'll do it this way, so the, 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 the cut will be, will be pushed against the fence as we run it, and then we'll, we'll, then we'll just do it back down the other way. Turn on the light. Now I have a line on there that I want to stop at. And I will we'll go the other way. And what I'm going to do now, I'll start it and then just sort of creep up on the line and, and then cut it down this way so that I'm getting the proper rotation of the bit to uh And you have to turn the light out very quickly. There's four little watch, uh, like, uh, watch batteries in there that run that light, and it only lasts about 10 minutes if you let it go. <laughs> so I use it, you cut it, you turn it on, make your cut, and shut it off. Well, now we've got, now we've got the, uh, the two, what will be the two edge cuts uh, for the string. And now we'll, we'll talk about how we line up the, uh, um, the curve between them.
Oh, that should be good enough. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, we're going to need somewhere, some way to uh, hold this leg so we can put the compass on there. And that's what this little jig is here. So we're just going to clamp clamp this in the in in the vise just so that we got it there. So that's good and solid. Now the, the leg is the leg has a taper on it. This is the side that we're going to use. We're going to put the uh, taper. The taper is on this tapers on this edge here, and we're gonna we're gonna work um, the thing square. So what we do is we have a somewhere here. See it now. Uh, I got a little wedge, a little thin wedge that was with this. Uh, that goes in there. It's right underneath. Or? Yeah, I was wondering if that might be it. Yeah. Oh shoot. Maybe next figure is. Well, I'm not. Sure. Underneath the leg. I got it. No, that's not it. Uh, the actual leg you're clamping. It's like it's underneath there. No, it's under the jig. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's here it is. Yeah, I got it. That's good. I got it. Fine. It was hiding. So now I put this in on the on the uh, on the on the tapered side so that I can get the get the get the leg pretty well square. Now this this particular jig I I, I made this jig. Um, I know when Roger taught his class he he just had one he just clamped together with some wedges. But I I I tend to like to make things work a little bit better. So I make them adjustable so that they're we useful. We won't show Roger that. <laughs> yeah, I know. We won't tell Roger that. Well, that's that's going to end up on the uh, cutting room floor. OK. <laughs> so anyway, so there is the, uh, that's the jig. And I can now slide this back and forth. I have here, where's my compass right there, the compass. Now we had figured out that the, that the, the dimension of the, uh, radius should be should be two inches, so I've I've got this set just about two. It should be set just about two inches, just a hair, and it was like one, one ninety five or something like that. So this is the right, pretty much the right radius. Uh, what we need to do is to get it approximately right, because you can fudge it as you do it, you know, as, as you're going along. So I, that's where it's going to be, and. Um, I, I'm gonna just move this a little bit. Where did you get that very nice compass? Oh, I'm not sure. I got it on. I got it online somewhere. It's about, it was about twenty bucks. What? What? You, let me let me just show you how you figure out where the compass is going to go. Um, first, I'll show you. We we know that we want the thing to be three and a half inches, so I'm going to start up here and I'll mark down here three and a half inches. Uh, three and a quarter inches, I'm sorry, three and a quarter. So there's three and a quarter right right about there. So now if I put the put the compass in this end and, and swing an arc, and I put the compass in here at three and a quarter and swing an arc, the X is where the uh, compass needs to go. So if I put the compass now on that X, you see it starts right at this corner. It goes over, and it, it, see, it's just about halfway between the center line and the, gro and the groove. And then I'm going to come down. And I'm not going to go all the way here with the, with the cut. I'm going to stop it. But, but, but the point is, that is the proper arc. And you see, if you do the calculation, you get it right on the money. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I have here compass locations, which I've used for the other table. And I'm going to just use those. So what I need to do is to move this up. Uh, I'm gonna, this is the fixed one, so I'm going to set this, set that, so that I'm right on the, on the, on that point, and then this one, uh, I'm gonna, I can move the piece of wood a little bit. So that's that's pretty, that's pretty close right there. And now we'll now we'll clamp this thing. 
How did you find out the point on the jig for the, the compass? Just like a second. Let me, let me just get this up, and then I'll answer your question. Did you get it? Yeah. And I can bring this up flush. Put this down flush. So everything is flush, and I've got a nice big surface here to run that router on. From where you want to start. Okay. And then you break an arc three and a quarter inches away from where you want to end up. Three and a quarter from both sides. Okay, so I got you now. Gen, and then you put your point, your compass on that. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. That intersection. Uh, let's and double check. Go between those two. Gotcha. That makes sense. Thanks. That's good. Uh, that, that's good, too. Okay. Now, what was the question? Actually, I, I, we just talked amongst ourselves. I, I think he, he solved it for me. Thanks. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So that's uh, yeah, that's good. So this is all nice and flush, and now we've got the location. I, we can trace now the compass lines on here. So if I start here, I'll, I'll, I'll trace this compass line. This one. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think as I look at this, it, it um, they intersecting uh, they intersect nicely on the center line, but this is a little yeah, they're pretty close. They're pretty close. Now down here, I want to find. Um, I'm going to find about halfway here. See, I'm going to stop it right about halfway between the center line and the edge. So there's, that's where I'm going to stop it. And now I'm going to just draw a line across there. Uh, this is the square edge of that square there. So I can put my, uh, no, I don't, what's the wrong one? Too small. Do the six inch square. Actually, what you find is that you don't want it actually dead square because you, you want it to be more or less, I'm going to just put it on square here today. Because it, won't, it won't make any difference. But what you need to do is to, to, to make this line perpendicular to the center line. Okay, you want to make that perpendicular. And you can, you can do it, but we'll just do it. Now you see I've got an intersection here with the curve and that line. So I'm going to, when, I, when I cut this curve, I'm going to stop there. When I cut this curve, I'm going to stop here. And then what I'm going to do, I'll just show the, to continue the layout here. I'm going to put the compass in here. Now this is, this is a little bit different D. See, the D is a little bit different here because the, the leg is tapered. So now you can just fudge it. See, well, you, well originally you gotta get, you've got to do the calculation to find these locations, but I've already done that. So now I'm just going to set the compass right on the uh, on that intersection, and now I can do this and come over here and do this, and you see you you, you now have basically the same thing again. And now down here, you've got to do, you'd, you'd have to repeat the same thing down here. But we'll just, we'll just um, do these up here. Take a little time. So now I've got to set the radius. Well, what I have to do is to take this fence off and put on the compass. Okay, now let's see if it matches. A bit to the pencil, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's, that's right. So now we now what we do is we're gonna we're gonna just run that arc. I'm gonna start at the start here in this point, and I'm gonna stop when I get to this line here. That the end that's where the end of the curve wants to be. So I'm gonna put this in there, put this in there. That's not quite. Let me just see. You want to just get you can. Just fudge this till it fits just right. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to cut that around. There's the star.
So there's, there's, there's that arc. Now, I don't cut the other arc now. We only cut the arcs on one side. I'll explain that in a second. But I can, I'm going to, I'll try cutting this other, uh, other groove, and what I'm going to do is just put the, um, loosen up the compass, put the uh, bit in the end of the hole that I just made, and then, and and set this in the in the uh, yeah. Just get that in there, right? That's that, and that's in there. And so now I can just lock this down, and I'm going to cut the next one. Okay, so now we've got two grooves. And now what we need to do is to put the, the stringing in those grooves. The, um, the problem, in fact, I'm gonna make a little mark here while I can see the mark. The, the, the this end of this jig lines up right about with that line there, which is, is good. The problem is, if you try to cut them all, how do you, how do you match them at the crossover? where they intersect, where the two curves intersect. So what you do is you, you put in, you, uh, what you do is you, you uh, do one side, put in the holly, and then you cut the other side, and now the match, uh, the intersection is perfect. We have other little tool here too, uh, that little black one there. Uh, it's basically a little chisel. It's just a, uh, the, basically the width of the groove so you can get down and get in the corners here and, and uh, get, it, get it cleaned out. So that's it. You gotta be careful here. I, I got a little chip out there, but I'm not gonna worry about it today. Right there, a little piece of wood when I was cleaning that out, I split that out. So let's see if we can uh, think about putting in a piece of, um, uh, of, of, of stringing in here. This one is gonna be fit. Yeah, yeah. Right, now we gotta cut this down, we gotta cut this down a little narrower size, this is a little bit too wide. And I'm gonna, uh, what I do is I clamp it down I'm going to do this over, over here because I, 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 I clamp this down to the bench under a ruler. This ruler, I'm going to show you here. Oh, this ruler has uh, sandpaper on the, on the, on the back side. Uh, and now, now what I'm going to do is, is put this down here. And we're going to need an eighth inch strip. I should have done this ahead of time. Sorry about that. So what we do is... Put the ruler down on the on the holly. Set it for an eighth of an inch, approximately. It's there. About an eighth of an inch there. Ah, that's close enough. It's just, just to be sure. So. And then I clamp it down with the hold downs. Uh. Now that rule is tight. To the, to the holly, and I just take my 
take my box knife here and there are other jigs and things you can use to cut this stuff but um, uh, it's, it's a little longer well it'll be all right Yeah, this this will be this will be fine. We, we we got we got a long enough piece to do the do the curve. That's that's good. All right, I'll go back here now and we'll glue this in. Let's see how long a piece we need. Well, we need a piece to go, you know, about like that, be plenty long enough. So we can cut, cut that off and we'll get it to the right length. Sharp chisel cuts it nicely. We gotta we gotta get that better cleaned out there. Go. And I, I, I just cut off a little piece. No, that's not it. Uh, it drives you crazy and things dis disappear like that. I don't see it on the floor either. No, I'll just cut off another one. About like that. Oh, I'll tell you what. Um, let's see. No, I need the. Uh, Soldering iron heated. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll plug it in over here. Uh, 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 let me see that. Uh, oh. Okay, put it, hold it while we glue it. It's funny, I don't know where that little piece went that I cut off. It took a while. All right, so let's see. We need a piece that's about about that, a little bit longer than that. Okay, we'll cut that there. I hope this one doesn't go flying. Now, the thing is, this is a fairly sharp curve. I could probably get that to go. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm going to need is, uh, I guess I can, I can use them. I just need a little water. Yeah, that's water in there. That's good enough. I'll take this out and use that water. What I'm going to do is wet this. I've seen this done a dozen times, and nobody says wet it. I've tried it a dozen times, and it didn't work. I had no, no, no luck at it at all. And then I saw somebody do it, and they, they wet it. And I thought about it, and I said, well, that makes sense. And, and uh, we'll wait for this to heat up. 
And what you can do is when you wet it, you can run the, uh, along the heat and you, it'll bend. So now you have most of the tension taken off and you'll be good. We should have got this hotter sooner. It's gonna take a minute for that to get hot. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna check the temperature of the sand over here. No, 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 take it, look, look. Straight up and down. 352, that's a little cool. Uh, try, we'll try that. Bruce, I think you pulled the plug out over here. Or is that plugged in over there? The heating the, that, the, the, no, the, that's plugged in there. Okay. And the, that, the plug I took out was the router. And the, and the siren iron's in there now. Oh, it's getting warmer. Let's see. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to just put this around the uh, uh, and, and heat this. Just sort of coax it along. Is that the compression side, Bruce, or does it matter with that thinner material? I'm sorry. That's the compression side, not the tension side. Oh, I don't know. I I just picked it up. Better. Well, if you can do if you can do the do it on the uh, the correct tension side. But it really doesn't make too much difference. Yeah, see now? We got the curve. I'll take that out of there and unplug it. So, so now this, see this almost matches. So now I can put this in here, <coughs> coax it around in the groove. Come on, get in there. Oh, this is a little bit fat. It swelled up with the water? Well, I probably swelled up with the water a little bit. What I do then, if, it, if it's a little too fat, come on. Where's my, where's my card scraper? I had a card scraper here. I got it right here. Nope, it's not a card scraper. No, that's okay. I got another one. I think I had it, but I sharpened it. Oh, here it is. <laughs> All right. So well, if it's too, too, it's just too fat, I just... Just give it a little scrape. You can take off, you know, you know so it drops, right, drops down in there. This is another one of those things. How do you, how do you fit it? Well, could you also do it with sandpaper? Yeah, you could, but the card scraper is a lot easier. Yeah, there we go. There we go. So I'm going to put this, butt this end up here, and then I'm going to coax it in here. Coax it in, coax it in, coax it in. And when I get down this end here, I have to see where do I have to cut it off. So what I'm going to do is cut it off right out of the line. So I make a little, little line right like that. And I mark it. And it's basically 45. So now what I'm going to do is put that down here. Put the put the this little jig here. I can hold the I can hold the um, stringing up tight against that edge there. Because normally you're doing it. It's and and then. Get your, get your chisel right in the in your in your line there. There it is, and up tight. If you hold the chisel tight up against the face of that thing, you can just push down, and you'll get yourself a nice little 45 degree angle cut on the end. So that's how you that's how you cut those angles here. How we make a little jig just like this.
just to hold it so you can put the chisel, hold the chisel flush tight like that while you do your cutting. And you hold the string against the fence in here, and bingo, you got it. So now let's see. That looks good. Okay. So now we'll just push this down in here. I had a dowel over there, but I don't see it right now. It's about a three quarter inch dowel. But you take, take, you take your chisel handle, see, and just coax it down in there. Oh, okay. I just have a, I have a dowel I can put out here and roll it along. Push it down. That's good. And I'll just wipe wipe the glue, excess glue off. So there's there's one there's, there's one in there. Now what you now if I were doing my legs, I I do this one and I do this one down here. Okay, but we'll just let that sit. Um, I'm trying to think here what I need to do next. We we gotta let those let those uh, let that dry, and I'll show you where the other one I where was the other one I did there. This one here, that's good. This one, this one here. What you need to do now is to um, trim this down. So after it's dried. So while that's drying, see if you're making these things, you're making uh, uh, you're making three or four legs. Usually I do them in pairs. I do the I do the the back legs first because they're on the outside and you don't see them very well. You make a little mistake, it's not so noticeable. And it gives you the practice, then you come around and do the front ones. But uh, what you can do is um, work on two. So you, you glue these in, then you work on the other leg. And when you get, by the time you get those glued in on the second leg, this is dry and you can go back to the, the next step, which is what we're gonna do right now. Oh, I didn't count the ox. I know there are 48 petals, though. <laughs> All right, so let's just put this back in the vise here to hold it. I'm going to just check to see which way the grains go in here. Yeah, I think I think we want to play, we want to cut it that way. Um, usually, what I do, uh, most people do, I think, is you, you take a block, take your block plane, and you can plane it down close. Let's see. See, this is this one was sticking up quite a bit. If you if you if you only got a thirty second of an inch prow, this just goes down with a few just a few strokes. We're getting there. That's getting that's getting pretty good. And when you get down, so you just got a little bit. Then I, what I do is I take my chisel and I pair it. So I get the flat of the chisel down on the, on the board and I can just... And use, use, a, use a little slicing action as you push the chisel forward.
and then a few strokes with the car scraper. And we're done. So there it is. Nice and flush, smooth, and you can pass this, we can pass this around to the class, let them take a look at it. Oh, here, uh, here's the, uh, give them the, uh, that goes in the other groove. Here. Oh, okay, that's good. Let me put that away. So that's basically how we do the string. It's, um, you know, uh, the cross piece, uh, normally stringing comes down, there'll be a, a cross piece at the bottom. Uh, what I do is I use, uh, use, use a knife to cut one edge, then I use a piece of the stringing. I don't have one here, give me a little piece of that stringing, anyone, yeah, that's fine. I mean, you can put your put your chisel in the knife. Now you've got the that, uh, the edge here, and then take your knife and and give yourself a little marking for the thickness. Okay, put that like that. That doesn't want to go well. well but anyway, you hold out there and mark that mark the other other edge, and now you've got two lines to, for the thickness of the string. And, and now what you need to do is to cut those lines. You can take a chisel, but when you do it with a chisel, be sure you have the sharp edge out, that the angle edge is to the center of the grain. You can uh, give it a little, few little light tops, few little light tops over here, few little light tops, and then, then go in bevel-wise, you know, so you get that edge doesn't get expanded. <clears throat> and then uh, you can take the, uh, the, these two little tools, here and just clean it out. You know this this one here. You can just dig down, and, and then if you're really into it, before those things came out from uh, from uh, Lee Valley, I got this little chisel here. This is a, this is a three three thirty second uh, blue spruce chisel. You can pass it around, and people can take a look at it just to see. What it is. It's like seventy-five dollars for that little sucker. So that's uh, that's how we do it. Any questions about this? All right. Well, then let's uh, start thinking about the the, the pedals. Do you need a break? Or We're now going to talk about the um, doing the bell flowers, uh, but before I do that, I'm going to just point out a couple of things that you might find interesting. The uh, front of the table has a, uh, is, is made up of uh, poplar bricks which are shaped, and then you need to put a veneer on there. Well, putting the veneer on there, you need a curved call, and that's kind of a little problem. So I came up with this. What it is is a piece of plywood that's cut through most of the way, and you see it'll bend. If you bend it too hard, it'll break. But if you have it against the, if you have it against the uh, apron, you just, you just clamp it, clamp it, clamp it, clamp it, clamp it, and you can get a perfect call that will match the curve. You can pass that around, people can take a look at it. Just when you make the cut, you've got to, you, yeah, see, so don't cut it, don't the tip trick it too much. to nick the last piece of veneer, right? Yeah. yeah, well, I don't go quite all the way. Yeah. You have to cut it so that the, um, the, the uh, f last layer of, uh, of the plywood inside, you want the grain to be going in the direction of the cut so it'll bend easier. If you've got it cross grain, it doesn't bend as easy, right? You, c you can bend the, bend the piece of wood this way much easier. Take the piece of veneer. Oh, I don't have one here. <laughs> in it. But you, 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 you can bend it with the grain, curl easily. Try to bend it uh, against the grain, you've got to push it much harder. So you want that thing cut. So that the uh, so it's uh, but that works really very well. Just slap that on there, clamp it down. You can put as many clamps as you want on it. And just tight, 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 and it. Uh, and that's described in the article on how to make the table. 
the other thing I was going to sh sh show you about, here's uh, some bellflowers. Uh, this is one that S Steve Latta had uh, described, and it's very nice. It's also quite, quite complicated because, you know, what you have to do is, is you can cut the bellflower out, but then you got to have cut the same shape out of the uh, piece you're going to inlay it into. And that gets to be a little difficult. So it took me about two hours just to, to, just to make that one. I didn't bother sand shading the ends of these. I did that one. On the other hand, this is the Boston and New York method of using these petals. The Boston method has the center petal in first and the side ones on top. New York put the side ones in first and the, and the uh, center one on top. But I like the uh, one, I like the Boston method better. And, and, and uh, when we, if you look, you'll see how they're sand shaded. And uh, that works out pretty nice. You can, you can pass that around to people just take a close look. So now what we need to do is to get these little oval shapes. So the way we do that is we cut them with curved, with curved gouges, uh, file gouges. And uh, there's a diagram in the handout that shows you the, the size gouges that I use for each petal. It's a, it's a little bit small, but you have, may have to use a magnifying glass to read it. But the, those show the, the, the sizes. So, okay. So how do we get the petals? Well, first of all, we need to cut them out. So I get, take, a strip of, uh, take a strip of holly. And then what I do, I've got to make a little mark here. How, how long do these pieces to be? Because it's better to cut them up into short pieces to start with. Because otherwise, so, so I'm going to put the gouge down, and I'll just make a, little, a couple of little marks like that. And now I'll take the, see, take the chisel, and I'm going to cut that one away. See, now, when I hit this with the chisel, it takes off. So you don't want it to do that. You're looking for all, all over the place. So let me just uh, let me mark that a little better so we can see it. Here's here's where I want to. These are the, these are the lengths that I need for the for the pieces to cut the cut the uh, petals out of. So what I do is I I'm going to set this like that. Put the chisel here. And then what I do. I put a, a I, I put a piece of cloth on here to trap that little sucker. So there's one. We'll make three or four. Cut out the piece with your Macacto knife and carve it out. Well, what I do is I. This is this this is a 725 gauge. I couldn't get a straight one, but I got a fishtail. The fishtail works just as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down on the, on the, uh, on the piece of uh, wood there and, and cut it. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is turn it around and go to the exact corner where I started, like that and like that. And there is a petal. And sometimes you get a little, t little bit on the end there and just nip that off. So there is one 25, 25 millimeter petal. And so now you sit there for the rest of the afternoon making these petals. Except they're not all the same size. Well, no, well, that's right. So you make a whole bunch of them. Yeah, that's the problem. And when you think you get enough of those, you get the 720 out. Here's the 720 container. So you get the 720 chisel, and you can cut 720s exactly the same way. If you're really, if you're really cheap like I am with the veneer, I don't want to waste it. I'll cut shorter pieces for, for these, but we'll, we won't worry about that today. I'm just going to cut that out like that. Pretty straightforward. Um, you just have to be... Sometimes I'll, I'll put on my magnifying glasses to show that I'm right on the corners. Just stick that down underneath there for me to get that out of the way. So now uh, we've got the petals. 
The next thing we need to do is sand shade them. So we'll do with the 725s. I got a couple here that we've done. I have some in here that have already been sand shaded too, so we don't have to wait to do them all. So let's go over here to the to the frying pan. This is a frying pan which has uh, a half an inch of very fine sand in it. Uh, this happens to be Ontario fine sand, <laughs> which is about the finest. Ottawa, Ottawa. I'm sorry, Ottawa fine sand. Ottawa. Uh, out of a fine sand, which is the finest sand known to man. And I got it from, uh, Ed got it for me from the MIT uh, Civil Engineering Lab. Okay, so here's the, here's the, here's the hot sand. I'm going to measure the temperature. It says uh, 401. So that's about the right temperature, I find. Half inch deep and about 400 degrees. And so now what we do is we're going to put this in here. Let me get my timer up. Oh, I don't have it here. Have have it. No, it's okay. We, we'll just we'll just wait and watch it. So you just push it down in like that. I push it down all the way, and maybe maybe even brush a little sand up uh, up against it, and and we wait. It takes about a minute. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. We'll take one out and look at it at 30 seconds. See, it's starting to come. It, it, it usually does not darken the same on each side. I, why, I don't know, but it, it, it does give a difference. So that's 30 seconds. Of course, it depends on how hot the sand is, fast or slow, but there it is. That's the whole idea. That's a minute. That's going, yeah, that's a minute. That's, that, that's pretty good. Okay. Now, for the center ones, you know, you know the uh, the other petals are going to go up on, on either side on top of it. So what I usually do then is try and dark, shade this a little bit, not as not as dark as that necessarily, but just to get some coloring there, so you can see the line where the intersections are. So I'm just going to sort of stick that in. I put it in usually more on, more on a little angle, darken up there. It's a little. I, I do it a little bit more, but you get the idea that you can. So you get a much, a much more gradation in it by putting it in on an angle. So that's uh, that's how we do the, do the sand shading. So that's another. Between the petals, you probably noticed that there was a, a little dot. Uh, let me show you how I do that. You just need a little piece. Oh. I have this punch, which I, which, which is uh, has different sins. I'm going to have the biggest. I use the biggest one, which is four millimeters. Four millimeters is the big one. And the next one down is the next size down is the three and a half millimeters. Now you can uh, you can buy these leather punches. In fact, you can buy straight ones. They're just a straight punch. You know, you hit it and the, you know, it comes up through the leather. For about five bucks, you can get a set from like one and a half to four millimeters by half millimeters from Amazon. So that's but you need a punch like this. I ended up getting this one before I looked and saw the others. The others would probably be a little a little easier to use. I just got a good hold on the on the thing, put it over the over the wood, and give it a see. And I've cut one. Now I'll cut another one. And that's how you make the make the little dots. That that's four millimeters in diameter which turns out to be, I think, 5 30 seconds of an inch. Because uh, I use a 5 30 second inch drill, just to drill a, drill, just drill a slight hole and stick it in. Now, those get sand shaded, too. But that's a little more difficult, because 
<clears throat> eight is so small. So when you get it down at the bottom of the sand, how do you find it and get it back out? <laughs> right? Tough to find it with the, <laughs> it'll be all broad. So I have a small hemostat here, see? And I'm just going to grab it by the edge, okay? And the hemostat. And now we can stick it in, now I can put this whole thing in the hot sand. So that's how I sand shade the little dots. <laughs> Okay, so here's the leg we're gonna, gonna stick them in. This is now dried, we can pare that down. In fact, let's just do that, just, just so we'll see what it looks like. When you uh, have the two springings in here that are both proud, the block plane sits on it very nicely, so you can take them down together. That's pretty. That's pretty good. And now we just let's say we just pair it. When you're doing this, if you just lift your chisel just a hair, it'll it'll just take the take that right down, dead solid, perfect. And there you have a. That's how the you put one in. Now, see if we cut the other one. This way, they'd intersect here, and see now you now the the router would cut through the uh, existing one, and when you put the next one in there, it's a perfect crossover joint. So you always do them one and then the other. Don't try to do them at the same time. All right. So now what we're going to do is to uh, Uh, let's see, I should draw some lines on here so you can see what I'm doing. So... That's where the that's where the um, the uh, curve is going to start, and here we have the compass. And that's where the side ones would end. And now what we do is uh, I'm going to put this in here, and I'll draw. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's not right. I don't have the thing in it. Anyway, uh, what, 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 I'll, I'll just sketch it in. What we're going to do is we're going to have two curves that come down like this and come down like this. And you have to put those in first. Okay, so now we're, that's where they, now the, that tells us then the, uh, the start of the, of the first, where that intersects, you're going to have a four millimeter pedal. So you get out, I get out about three millimeters, and that's where I'm going to start my, put my, put my pedal in first. So let me just take, I'll just take the end of this to make a little dot right about there. Okay, so that's where the, that's where the top of the pedal wants to be. Now, where am I? Here I am. Here. That's a 720. 725, okay. So now you take the same chisel. You've got your center line going down here. I'll, let me, I'll make that a little darker so you can, with the so you can see it. If it doesn't, if it isn't dead, dead, dead center, it won't make any difference. We're just illustrating the method here. Yeah, that's a little better. So the first is the, the first one's going to be the big one. So we we set the set the chisel down right at the start. And you set the other corner right on the line like that. And you just press down. Now, I want to cut it in there. I can't, if I bang it down now, the bevel's going to push the edge out. So what I have to do is to tip the thing so the bevel is vertical. And there's half the cut. 
And now I do the same thing. I match it on the other, other way, like that. See, that's a lot easier than trying to cut those. <laughs> now, I take my X-Acto knife, and I, I cut this out. It's important that you have this cut down. You can, you can just follow the, the chisel track. But it's important that you have it cut straight down as deep as the pedal needs to be. I slipped a little bit off there. I thought I'm probably like in my glasses. Let's see, we'll see better. So we just get that. In fact, at the ends, you can just take the knife and just push it right down in there because you want that end to be cut clean. So you get a nice sharp corner there. So this takes a little time. You gotta go along here. Whoops, that's not good. Take my time. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do two of these, too many of these at the same time because you get tired. And that's probably what my problem is right now. A little bit tired. Rushing. Okay, well, let's see how that came out. See, now we're going to get this out of here. How do I do that? Router. My router. Let me get my router. It's a hand me the router. Now I don't need I don't need a fence on this. This is all gonna be freehand, so I'll take the fence off. <laughs> Cause I, I got that nice bright light. I'll turn it I'll do it this way so maybe the camera can pick it up. Let me plug it in. And it's set for it's also set for uh, that ah we, we are, no it's not set set too deep so I have to reset the uh, yeah so what I need is a, a piece of the the holly and now I'm gonna just have to get old. And and now what I got I'm gonna do is I've got to, I've got to back this up. Uh, back. And this is just thing of that. This this is a this is a vernier adjustment that you have. So when I'm gonna get it close, and then we'll use the vernier to get it just right. So I'm gonna make this just the. Uh, Just a hair than, less than the thickness of the of the holly. Oh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So it'll be good enough for this. So now I got the right depth. So be sure you get the right depth. Now I'm going to just hollow that out.
there. So we got it close. Now, you can take a little chisel. I should use the, I, I use the Lee Valley one, the, yeah, just to show you how it works. And see, now you can go across here. Go, just push in there, and, and, and hopefully it'll, you'll get, if, there, if it doesn't come up like that, see, that didn't quite come up, so I need to take the X-Acto knife now and, and cut down there a little bit. Ever use a router plane in there? I sure do. I was just waiting to get that out. It's it's not a good idea to try to wedge it, uh, try to lift it out, you know, split it out because you you ruin your edge. I'm sorry? I have it back. Yeah, could that work? Oh, yeah, I use that too. These, they're both, they're both, uh, I was trying to, uh, I was, uh, what did I do with it? I thought I'd put it back in there. Your battery is on, your flashlight's on too. Oh, yes. Oh, here it is here. Yeah, you can you can use your your, your little your, your little chisel. <laughs> and it's, it's sometimes it's easier once you've got it cleaned out. You can cut down easier because there's no wood pushing against you. So you, so you can get a a better cut down on the. on that edge there. See how you want to have that nice and nice and straight vertical. And you mentioned the router plane. I think I have one here. Now what's going on? Are you sponsored by Veritas? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. This is probably just about right. Yeah, that's pretty close. See, yeah. And so you can, it's good for getting into these edges here, too. See, the, the, it, it works good cutting up to those edges because it, 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 it's just the right it's just the right depth, and you'll cut cut in there. Let's see how this comes. Let me get this. Well, that's getting there pretty close. Oh, yeah, 
Okay. okay. All right, let's see if that fits. Okay, here's my bevel gauge, which I have set for 30 degrees. Get this. So now I put this on right. here. Put the gauge right at the top of the of the previous pedal. And I draw a line. So that's where the pedal is supposed to go. So now I've got to look for a 720. Well, I use my 720 gouge. Oh, that's your. So I got now. Wait a minute. I drew it. I drew it for 30 degrees. Only I drew it 60 degrees. So now the 720 should work. Start here. Yeah, and there. There we go. <clears throat> Just repeat the steps. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I do them all before I put the dot on. After I have them, I leave a little space here between Just them, e even on either side. And I look at it this way, and you see I'm, I'm covering both of the ends, and then just, just a little, just a little. Notch, and I use I use the um, uh, I, I did say it, Lee Valley uh, Brad Point drills. I I have the set. There's a set. It's like, Fish. huh? Fish bits. Well, I I don't I'm not familiar with others uh, other other brands, but. Um, Okay, so that's cut. Bruce, we got a little bit of blood there too. See the blood? Oh, yeah, the Roy Underhill effect. Oh. <coughs> okay, so now we, now I'm just going to uh, route this out. When I when I get down to doing the the uh, smallest ones at the bottom. I switch over to a thirty to the thirty second inch bit to route it. <laughs> so now we can just chisel this out, clean this out. This one looks a little better.
little drop of glue. And we stick it in. I'm just using super glue today. Because <clears throat> now the uh, fact that super glue works works good. Uh, yeah, I, I I just banged it down there. It'll, it'll be it'll be all right. Let that dry. <clears throat> I don't see any reason why you can't use super glue. Look, it worked fine. To, it worked fine for us now. <clears throat> so all we got to do is. Uh, We'll just pair that off and that'll be it. You can see here on the leg now where we have the, the, uh, the score marks from the gouge. And as I say, we'll just cut that out, deepen them with the X-Acto knife and cut them out and excavate them to set in the pedal using the router as we did before. Generally, I use a 132nd inch router bit on the smaller pedals. Oh, okay. Now that we have the marks from the gouge, we can take the X-Acto knife and can score it and dig down in deep in order to set the walls for the excavation. The trick here is the fact that we use the dividers to both set the length of the pedal in the cutout and the length of the excavation will mean the pedal will fit exactly into the excavation. Uh, at an intermediate size. And so all you need to do for any length of pedal is just find a gouge that's a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, find a gouge that's a little bit bigger, and then use uh, a millimeter scale to set the size that you actually want. The bell flowers, as they move down the leg, gets progressively smaller. And so we need progressively smaller petals as well. Unfortunately, with the Available gouges, we have 25, 20, 18, and 14 millimeters, and so that's the only size pedal you can cut by just using the entire gouge. But in between, we need other sizes. For example, between, with the 18 as the main pedal, a 16 millimeter pedal would be, would be a nice fit. And let me show you how we cut that. You start by getting, by setting a set of dividers to 16 millimeters. So let's get that. So we have the dividers set at 16 millimeters. Now I take the piece of holly that I want to, uh, uh, got to cut off a piece here. Now we take the dividers and we make two, two marks, which are now 16 millimeters apart. And I'll just take my pencil and make those a little brighter so you can see. So th those two dots are now 16 millimeters apart. And now I'm going to take my, my square and draw a line across at each... Uh, dot so now we have a, a pair of lines that are 16 millimeters apart now the next largest gouge is the 18 so I'm going to take the 718 and now I'm going to make a cut with that you see now we have a 718 gouge but it goes a little bit beyond a little bit beyond the lines. And so now what we do is we just turn this around, put the put the gouge at the line where the lines intersect that original cut. And now we have a now we have a pedal that's 16 millimeters long. 
In order to fit it into the leg, I'm going to first put on the, the 30 degree line that uh, the pedal was going to go at. So I'm just going to put that on there. So there's a 30 degree line is on there. And now I take my dividers and I put those on that and, and make, the, make the mark for the end of the pedal. So now we have a, the, the dividers set both the length of the pedal and the length of the excavation that we're going to need. Now, we, st we start by taking the gouge and put it, putting it on those two points. And you're going to push down and, and you'll make a mark for those, for, the, for that line. Turn it around the other way and Any questions? Any questions about the... You know, Steve Latta takes the, uh, the miter <coughs> plane on the router plane, thank you, and he files one of the smallest points down to a spear point. Right. And he uses that for clean out. I, 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 have, I have extra blades for this plane. <clears throat> if you, uh, I, I think I said get an extra blade in the tools, <clears throat> and you can grind it down to a point. Yeah, uh, I, I, I just, uh, I got the extra. What happened was I bought the extra blades, and then I lost them. What I'm doing is I can't find them. When I was all done, I found them, so I didn't. <laughs> that, that's never happened to me. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, no, uh, that little ro that little roller plane. Yeah, pass that around so people take a look at it. They haven't seen that. <coughs> That's one of Veritas's miniature tools. <coughs> and I have their I have their miniature. Um, I have two or three of them, but I I have the one that's the uh, shoulder plane. And you know what that's really good for? <clears throat> well, that table doesn't have legs, but I had I had made a table. I have a table over my apartment. Where I have reeded legs. Well, shaping those, those little tiny reeds for that little mini plane, well, you clean those up like nothing. <clears throat> of course, they're, they're, they're pretty good because I, you know, I, have a, I made a jig to make those, those reeds with on the, uh, a, router to, a router on the lathe. It, worked, it really worked good. Phil, Phil always likes to scrape them. And he, he never, I, made the, I made the leg in three parts. So the center part with the, with the reeds had a dowel turned on each end, which doweled into the to the other turnings the other way. So you, you get a, so you get a perfect joint where, the, where, the, where they go right up because they're, they're just clean bingo. So that's it. Well, this ought to be dry enough now. Let's just pair that and see how it came out. Sometimes just take a little, just take a little, don't try to take the whole thing at once. You just take a little, a little corner. You mean Phil's half inch paring chisel? I'm sorry? Remember Phil had that famous half inch paring chisel that he made out of a yeah. blade? And it was very low angle. He used it a lot. Phil loved it. Well, this is just my regular chisel. I've gouged, I've gouged this up a little bit here, but it cleans up a little bit. Okay. Here, yeah, now you, Pat, we'll pass this around, and you can see. And what you want to look at, you'll notice how the sh shading of the center one, see the shading on that center one d gives you a nice sharp corner uh, where the uh, angled one comes in. You know, be a nice cut, nice, uh, nice color there. So well, that's good. And I'll pass that around, I can look at it. So that's how it's done. <coughs> so I expect you all going to make a table now, and uh, uh, you can read my article on how to build a table, and now you know how to do the. Uh, we'll have it done next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. how many hours do you think you got here? Well, you know, I figured I had, um, 
because I spent a lot of time practicing to do that. I didn't just sit down and cut those right out. You know, I tried different things and uh, try this, try that. To, uh, so I have, uh, uh, you know, I said I said it took 24 hours to do those flowers. I probably got uh, uh, maybe a whole, maybe five days, uh, five full days of experimentation of cutting and practicing different techniques to, to, until it came out right, getting the sand shading to come out just right. And uh, the rest of the table, uh, the, the rest of the table, we did in the class, I can probably do the rest of the table, is, is not that hard. Uh, you could probably do it in a week, basically full time. They, they are, but if you follow the, if you, if you use the jig, they come out pretty easy. <clears throat> there's, just some there's just some techniques for cutting them, which is all, are all described in the article. I just I sent it to Jim, uh, so it's going, it's going to be in the journal that comes out at the end of this year, I suspect. I was, I was making my table parallel, the holes in the legs for the berries now. Ah, the holes in the legs. I, I eyeball them. <coughs> yeah, let me show you. I, I'll show you the drill. This is a, okay. That's a five thirty second drill, and that's uh, that is within a couple of thousands of, of four millimeters. <clears throat> so, if you look at that drill, you'll see it's got two nice sharp wings on it to cut that brad point. These are really good brad point drills. They're worth every penny. They cut a perfectly straight, clean hole. <laughs> and so, what I do, I I. I got it in the drill and I got the drill down, uh, you know, almost, I set the table height so I'm only maybe an eighth of an inch above the leg. So I can look at the drill and I say, if, is it in the center, you know, I can, I can move it side to side to get it centered. And I look around the corner, is it, is it, going, is it touching the top and bottom, the, the three millimeter that I left there, is it covering that? And I get it like that and then I just go, Shh. just a little, Shh. You don't have to go over. Well, you can. You, you, I drilled it a little deeper, and it's all right. You can push the. You can push the, the, the little disc in. It doesn't have to bottom out. You know, it just glues around the edge because it fits perfect. <clears throat> and so you just have. If you if you look, you'll see one or two of those are a little bit off center, if you look real careful. <clears throat> 